Hi there, and welcome to the Sally Tomato Online Classroom. I'm Kate, and I'll be your instructor today for a wonderful sling bag pattern. Step by step, we are going to create Crockett, a bag that's going to be perfect for any modern adventurer. This unique bag has an exterior front slip pocket with a securable flap, an interior zipper and slip pockets, exterior side gusset zipper closure, and an adjustable crossbody or shoulder strap with left or right hand versatility. The slim profile makes it easy to sling over your shoulder and go. The name of this bag was inspired by Davy Crockett figure in United States American history was legendary for all his travels and adventures. So I'd like to think Mr. Crockett would approve of all the features that you'll find in the Crockett pattern. Be sure to purchase the pattern before beginning this class. The pattern and your supplies can be purchased from our website or request them at your local quilt shop. Remember to shop local whenever you can. It's always great to support a local business. We are going to be going step by step. So if you need to, feel free to pause your video and catch up or take a break. We are going to be creating a variety of different pockets, a zipper inside the lining for a zipper pocket, as well as a zipper gusset. So. Don't worry, we'll be going step by step and we've got great instructions full of illustrations to help you along. So be sure to have your pattern on hand and we'll get started at the work table. You'll need a main fabric, contrast fabric, lining, woven webbing, sew-in foam or fleece batting, and fusible interfacing. This project has a lot of pieces, so you may find it helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by marking the name on each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or chalk. Remember to review the cutting layouts in your pattern for the most efficient use of your fabric. We've also listed several helpful notions and tools on the back of the pattern cover. Also follow the manufacturer's instructions for fusing the interfacing and installing hardware. So first, center and fuse the interfacing to the wrong sides of the coordinating main fabric pieces C, D, E, F, and G. Then center and fuse interfacing to the wrong sides of the coordinating lining fabric pieces I and N. Now with right sides up, position each main fabric piece M over one foam or fleece piece A, aligning the sides and bottom edge. You can use basting spray or sewing clips to hold the layers together for sewing. You'll notice the foam is shorter than the front and back exteriors to allow for easier sewing when the bag is assembled in a later step. At the sewing machine, baste along each edge. Refer to your pattern for the recommended stitch lengths and seam allowances. Now we can begin shaping the back and front pieces. Mark in from each side along the short top edge of the main fabric piece A front exterior. Draw an angled line from each mark to the adjacent bottom corner using removable pen or chalk. Position the corner template included in your pattern in each corner of piece A. I copied the corner onto brightly colored paper so it's easier for you to see. Trace the outer edge of the template from edge to edge. Then at the machine, sew just in from the curved and angled lines. Cut along the marked lines to shape piece A and repeat for the main fabric piece A back exterior. Remember to mark and trim those top corners. Now mark in from each side along the short top edge of the lining fabric piece M front interior. And following your pattern, shape piece M for the lining fabric piece M back interior. Okay. 
Let's prepare the connectors. Fold each length side of the main piece B connector to the center with wrong sides together and press. I'm using our favorite little Aliso iron and wool pressing mat to create crisp pressed edges. Fold in half again, wrong sides together, and press. Top stitch along each length side of piece B. Then we're back to the work table. Now cut into four pieces. Refer to your pattern for the correct measurement. Thread one piece B through one swivel hook and each of the three D rings so it's in the center. Then fold each connector in half aligning the raw ends. Use the sewing clip to hold those ends together. Now we can prepare the sling bag back. With right side up, position one D ring piece B connector out from the center of the bottom edge of main fabric piece A back. Allow the raw ends of piece B to extend below the piece A edge. You'll repeat attaching the second D ring piece B. Now pin in place or use sewing clips and then baste the connector in place. We can now set the panel aside for the time being and then we'll create the front pocket flap. Mark in from each side along the long bottom edge of the main fabric piece C front pocket flap. Draw an angled line from each mark to the adjacent top corners using removable pen or chalk. Position the corner template in a bottom corner of piece C. Trace the outer edge of the template from edge to edge and also trace the curve in the opposite corner. Next, cut along the marked lines to shape piece C. Repeat the same steps for the remaining piece C. Now you're going to position one D-ring centered between the curved corners on one piece C. Allow the raw ends to extend beyond piece C and then pin in place. Baste in place along the edge of piece C. And now we're going to place both pieces C right sides together and aligning all the edges. Sew together along the sides and bottom curved edge, leaving the top edge open. Snip small notches along the curves, then turn piece C right side out and press the edges nice and flat. Then the last step here is to top stitch along the seam edge. Mark in from each side along the long top edge of the main fabric piece D front pleat pocket. Draw an angled line from each mark to the adjacent bottom corners using removable pen or chalk. Cut along the marked lines to shape piece D. And you'll repeat the steps for the lining fabric piece D. With right sides together, position the main fabric piece C pocket flap centered along the top edge of piece D. Place lining piece D on top, sandwiching piece C between the layers, and align all the eight raw edges. Pin or clip the top edge, securing the flap, and then we'll sew them together. Press both pieces D away from piece C, that's the flap, and at the sewing machine, you'll top stitch along that seam. Now on the wrong side, at the top edge of piece D, mark two marks from each side of the center. Label the marks A, B, C, and D from left to right. On the bottom edge of piece D, mark just one mark from each side of center. Label the marks A and B. Now with wrong sides together, match the top marks A and B. Fold the excess fabric towards the outer edge to create a pleat. Press the pleat flat and repeat with the top marks C and D. Check your pattern for the recommended finished width. Next, press a fold, wrong sides together at the bottom markings. The second or interior fold of the bottom pleat will be created in a later step. A wonder clip will help keep the layers flat. Top stitch each of the top folded edges of the top pleats starting at the top edge and sewing just in from the fold and then stopping just down from the top edge. You can also top stitch the bottom pleats as well. We can begin assembly of the sling bag front. With right side up, we'll position the bottom edge of pocket piece D that we just completed 
above the bottom edge of the main fabric piece A front exterior, aligning the sides and folding in the bottom pleats. Use pins or sewing clips to hold the layers together. Then at the machine, baste the pocket in place along the sides and the bottom. Press the bottom edge of the pocket to set the interior pocket leads. Now with right sides up, align the contrast piece H, bottom front exterior, on piece A matching the side and bottom edges. Hold piece H in place with basting tape and sewing clips. Then at your machine, top stitch along the top edge of piece H. Trim the bottom corner curves following piece A and then baste along the sides and edges. Next, this is optional, add a handmade label centered just below the top stitching. I think it adds a designer look to the bag, but that's your choice. Be sure to visit our YouTube channel for a video tutorial on installing this hardware. Okay, let's keep going. Position one swivel hook connector centered and down from the top edge of piece A. Pin or tape the connector in place, and then test the placement by clipping the hook to the pocket flap D-ring, and adjust if needed. Place one contrast piece J connector tab covering the connector ends. Top stitch all four edges, and then top stitch an X inside if desired. On the wrong side of lining piece N interior zipper pocket facing, mark a horizontal line from both long edges. Then mark a vertical line in from the right short end and in from the left short end. The line creates a zipper placement box. Don't worry, the box is not perfectly centered and that is correct. With right sides together, place the lining piece N down from the top edge of lining piece M interior back. The narrow allowance on one short end will be towards the top of piece M and pin in place. If you prefer a left-handed zipper, place piece N along the left-hand angled edge. Now at the sewing machine, sew along the zipper placement box. Try reducing your stitch length to 2.0 millimeters to more accurately follow the marked box lines, especially at the corners. Using a small scissors or seam ripper, carefully cut a horizontal line through the center of the stitched placement box, stopping from both just before you reach both ends. Then cut diagonally toward the stitch corners at each end. Make sure to cut through all the fabric layers, but do not cut through the stitching. Then you'll fold the facing through the opening in the wrong side of piece M and press in place from both sides of the lining. We're just about ready to attach the zipper pocket, but while we have the iron set up, press the long bottom edge of the lining piece O, zipper pocket A, and the lining piece P, zipper pocket B, to the wrong sides. With right sides up and the zipper closed with the pull on the right, position the long edge of the shorter zipper to the top long edge of piece O. And if you're left-handed, the zipper should be closed with the pull on the left, which would be opposite the figure in your instructions. Hold the zipper in place with pins or sewing clips. Sew the long edge of the zipper to the top long edge of piece O, removing the clips as you sew. Using a zipper foot is really helpful at this point. Otherwise, be sure to stop and move the zipper pull out of the way as you sew. Then back at the work table, press piece O away from the zipper, keeping the zipper tape flat. Position piece O wrong side up, and the zipper is right side up on the top. With right sides together, center piece O over piece P aligning the top, bottom, and sides. Pin the sides and top edges. And then we're back to the machine. Sew in place along the top edge. Press piece P away from the zipper, applying basting tape along both length sides of the zipper. 
With wrong sides together, center the zipper inside the finished placement box of lining piece M interior back. When the zipper is closed, the pull should be at the top. Move the zipper pull inside the box and then press down to adhere the basting tape. Top stitch the inside edge of the placement box. Now back at the work table, refold the pressed pieces O and P hem edges to mimic the angle of piece M. Press the new hem edge and then trim the excess hem allowance. This extra step minimizes the pocket bulk in the narrower part of the sling bag. You'll then move the right side of piece M out of the way and then sew the pocket pieces together along the short edges. Repeat the same step for the opposite side. Remember to leave that pressed hem at the bottom open and then unzip the zipper. We're going to prepare for attaching the slip pocket. With right sides together, fold the lining piece Q interior slip pocket in half, meeting the short ends. Align the bottom and side edges, and then pin the layers together. At your machine, sew the sides and bottom edge, leaving about a three inch opening along the bottom. Trim the corners, being careful not to cut through the stitching. Then you'll turn piece Q right side out. Turn the seam allowance at the opening to the wrong side, creating an even edge along the bottom. And then give your pocket a nice press. Next, you'll top stitch along the top edge of the pocket. With right sides up, center your piece Q pocket up from the bottom edge of the lining piece M front interior. You'll pin in place and then at the machine, top stitch the sides and the bottom edge. Before we move on to the gusset, you could even add a second slip pocket just by adjusting the size to fit in an upper area of the lining. Okay, so let's get to the gusset. Position the longer zipper along the length of one main fabric piece E zipper gusset with right sides together. Layer one lining piece E zipper gusset on top of the zipper against the right side of piece E. Pin or clip and then we'll sew together along the length. Press both pieces E away from the zipper wrong sides together and then you can top stitch along the seam edge. You'll repeat the steps to attach the remaining pieces E to the opposite side of the zipper, making sure to align the short ends. I'm actually top stitching both of the seam edges at one time here. Trim the assembled zipper gusset so it measures the same width as the bottom gusset. Make sure to trim an equal amount of fabric on each side of the zipper and move the zipper pull to the center. Now we can complete the gusset. With main fabrics right sides together, align the long edge of the piece F top gusset with the zipper gusset. And then with the lining fabrics right sides together, align the long edge of piece F top gusset with the zipper gusset. Sew together, starting and stopping just in from each side edge. When the zipper is closed, the pull should be near the top gusset. Repeat the steps to attach the contrast and lining pieces I bottom gusset to the opposite short end of the zipper gusset. Press the gusset pieces away from the zipper so they are wrong sides together. At the machine, we're going to top stitch along the seam edge, starting and stopping again in from each side. With right sides together, place the remaining short bottom gusset ends at one end of the side gusset, aligning the short raw edges. I found this easiest with the side gusset pieces wrong sides together. Then sew together, again starting and stopping, in from each side edge.
Press the bottom gusset pieces away from the side gusset so they are wrong sides together. And again, top stitch along the seam edge, starting and stopping in from each side. So now we can begin assembling the sling bag. Fold the front, back, and lining main panels in half to find the bottom centers. Also fold the bottom gusset in half, matching the seams to mark the center of the contrast and lining long edges. With the right sides of the main fabric together, match the bottom center of the assembled gusset and front. Use sewing clips to hold the raw edges together. Continue to clip together the rest of the bottom and side edges of the gusset to the front. Make sure you're only clipping the main fabric together at this point. And remember to tuck the front pleat of the pocket in so it doesn't get caught in the seam. Sew the clipped area together. Be aware of the gusset seam allowances as you sew, tucking them together for a smooth seam. Then repeat to attach the opposite side of the gusset to the main fabric back. Repeat the steps to attach the lining main panels to the lining side of the gusset. Attach the lining that's with the slip pocket right side down over the main fabric front first. Then at the machine, this time use a slightly wider seam allowance. The wider seam allowance makes the lining a bit smaller so it will fit very neatly inside your finished bag. Turn the lining right side out. Then attach the remaining lining. You can unzip the zipper if you feel that it's easier to maneuver under your needle. And don't be afraid to squish the exterior out of the way. The magic of using the foam is that your bag will pop back into shape no matter how much you squish it. This method of assembly takes a bit of maneuvering, but the results avoid a drop in lining and binding raw edges. Take a few minutes to trim the lining seam allowance. It's okay if the top ends of the gusset are longer than the lining front and back. Bring the gusset layers out from the front and back and then with right sides together, align the main front and back. Sew along the top curved edge beginning and ending at the gusset seams. Snip notches into the curves without cutting into the stitching. Turn right side out through the unsewn edge of the interior zipper pocket. You can take a minute to top stitch or hand sew the pocket turning edges closed. Then press the top curved end of the bag. Mark a horizontal line down from the top edge. Then smooth and tuck the gusset ends into the top sewn section. And then press, really setting those edges. Then top stitch along the marked line and the top outer edges, catching the gusset ends in the stitching. Slide one rectangle ring onto one webbing piece R strap connector, then fold piece R in half over the front and back of the bag top edge. You'll position the raw ends of piece R centered down from the top edge of the bag. Hold the strap connector in place with basting tape. Next, you'll center one contrast connector tab over each piece R end, positioning it below the bag top edge and secure with basting tape or paper tape or both. Top stitch on the front right side through all the layers, following the tab edge, and if you like, Top stitch an X within the stitched box. All right, we are ready to work on the adjustable strap. Thread one end of piece S strap over the center bar of the slider buckle. Then fold the end of the strap to the underside and top stitch the end of the strap to itself. Now thread the opposite end that's without the buckle through the top rectangle ring. 
thread the strap end over the center bar of this slider buckle. And to complete the strap, thread the end through the rectangle ring of the strap end tab. Fold the end of the strap to the underside and then top stitch the strap end to itself. Now we can have fun adding some decorative details. If you're using zipper pulls that have a hole in the tab, such as a donut or circle zipper pull, you have the option to add a decorative fabric pull for a free spirited touch. With wrong sides together, fold one contrast piece K zipper pull in half, matching the short ends. Thread the short ends through the hole in the exterior zipper pull tab until the tab is in the middle of piece K. Thread the short ends through the loop, that's the folded end of piece K, and then pull tight to secure. And then how about adding a tassel? Be sure to visit youtube.com backslash Sally Tomato for a video tutorial on how to make a tassel using tassel cap hardware. This makes a really fun accent for your bag. Attach your tassel to a connector D-ring or rectangle ring. And look, your Crockett bag is completed. Let's start packing for our next adventure. Even if it's going to work or running errands, keep your essentials organized using the different pockets and then adjust the strap to fit crossbody or shoulder. And you're on your way. Thank you for sewing with me today. I hope you enjoyed our class and that you're inspired to try sewing more Sally Tomato patterns. We'd love to see your version of Crockett, so be sure to share photos using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Crockett Bag Pattern. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and just subscribe to our channel. I hope you enjoyed learning some new ideas, new techniques, and I'd like to thank you for joining me, and I look forward to hearing your comments. We always learn from you as well. So thank you and happy sewing.